Hi everyone, uh, my name's Sam Bowen and um, I'm delighted to be here with Rhiannon Armstrong today. Uh, we're going to talk to you a little bit about the magic work that we've been doing um, together and with my daughter Lucy, who has inspired both of us. Uh, Lucy is a person with um, severe learning disabilities and is a wheelchair user and a non-word user and has some complex medical stuff going on. Um, so we thought it's appropriate to, to be talking to you today because of the work we do it has quite a crossover to do with um, that would be appropriate for people, uh, persons with profound and multiple learning disabilities. And um, um, together with being mum to Lucy, I'm a museum professional and I uh, combine those two lived, loved experiences uh, supporting museums and galleries uh, globally, actually, um, with training um, to be more accessible. And I also have the great fortune of working with other artistic um, artistic people within theatres um, and Oily Cart was one of those theatres I've worked with with Lucy um, as a family and through them met Rhiannon. So Rhiannon, shall I hand over to you to talk about how we met and what do you do? <laughs> yeah, um, so hello, I'm Rhiannon Armstrong. Um, I describe myself as a performance artist, uh, usually because people then kind of expect something a little bit strange or like that it might be a bit unusual. I do lots of different kinds of of stuff. And um, but uh, theater sort of background and um, yeah, and I do different kind of work. And we met uh, through Oily Cart. So I had been an associate artist with them in, t in 2019, done a bit of dramaturgy um on a couple of shows and then uh they introduced us to each other mm -hmm. when I had a project um that was due to to get in development in 2020 and um then we had COVID mm -hmm. arrive and everything shut down and so um our first kind of meeting and our first collaboration was uh through this medium of zoom <laughs> uh, no. and remote collaboration <laughs> um so yeah so uh recently i've been in the last few years starting with working with you and lucy um focusing on music and sound collaboration um that privilege privileges sensory meaning making over intellectual meaning making um and it's around that work that we came together it's that's yeah sums it up beautifully and I think for us as a family, because we were a shielding family due to Lucy's vulnerabilities, um, being able to access a, a beautiful world um, in a liminal space, I want to say, because it, you know, it, 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 it's it's not sort of out there and it wasn't in their home. It was somewhere in between. It was very special. And I think, yeah, we all want to know how to use Zoom a lot better. <laughs> but um, so if we just quickly talk about that and we're going to show and we're going to yeah. um, just play a little bit of the music as well. But you we met a couple of times on Zoom, didn't we? And neither of us really knew how Lucy would react. Um, she has full vision, but how she would react to a person on the screen. And I think she reacted quite well, actually. I was happily surprised that she got that and she met you and, and we chatted, didn't yeah. we? Yeah, so we, so for that project, I suppose I'm thinking back to what what I was thinking and what I what we tried to do. Mm -hmm. I, I think we were really giving ourselves permission to just find a way to connect. Yeah. Um, so I had, I had some ambition, knowing that um, you were uh, shielding and quite isolated, and and things have been really t tough for quite a while mm -hmm. by then, because that was midway through twenty twenty one. And talking to Ellie, artistic director at Oily Cart, about what she understood about the things that different kinds of families um, and you in particular might be going through. Um, I was keen to my ambition I think was to make a piece of music that would combine both yours and Lucy's musical interests and musical worlds um yeah wasn't sure how <laughs> um and uh so meeting on zoom um together me and with the two of you together and uh I suppose asking both of you uh but but with you, Sam, being sort of the mouthpiece for facilitator, yeah, 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 um, about your different um and shared uh, musical interests, mm. um, and we was... came up with something quite special, didn't we? Because we, I remember thinking, 
although we were shielding, we were still, my husband and I were still working and trying to uh, homeschool Lucy and everything. It was, still, it was probably one of the busiest times in our lives. So going, oh gosh, yeah, I didn't do that thing for Rhiannon. And, and, and she said, record some three things. So it's like, okay, let's just record Lucy strumming a guitar. And it's like, oh, she's strumming a guitar. Not like, here's a guitar, Lucy, but like, she was playing music. Let's record that. Let's record me singing. And uh, I sing a particular song, which you'll hear in a minute, every, every night to her and have done since she was a baby. It's very, it has a very strong meaning to me. And then, oh yeah, let's just throw in as a slight curveball, not kind of deliberately, but just kind of a quite slight curveball that a track that I, um, a bicep, which is a dance deep, dance track called glue that i had heard i think it came out actually i think it came out in lockdown and was was um important to me in lockdown it was my kind of i say running i don't really run <laughs> but it was my my time out every day of being able to get out and to get out on my own in nature and, and jog run whatever and plug in this was my song shall we um yeah how did, how did you little... yeah but those were three really crazy different weird things how did you put this together? <laughs> so i guess I I did ask specifically and I think this is this is something so um I I've done a bit of radio work mm. and uh work with field recordings so oh, okay. I think I remember saying I remember thinking oh, I'll I'll see if I can get some recordings from from daily life yeah. from Sam of of Lucy in particular any vocalizations I was particularly keen uh to get um, and you said that she was really musical so yeah. and would play instruments so I was really keen to hear that and then yeah I wanted um, uh, sort of uh, tracks or pieces of music that already exist uh, that have some meaning for you yeah. um, and so we had the the bicep track which <laughs> you talked about reminiscing about your mm. sort of dance oh, my day. club years yeah <laughs> <laughs> um, and then yes you are my sunshine which mm. uh, which you sing to Lucy every night and yeah. so when you sent everything through and I was quite conscious about not trying to ask for too much and mm, so I was trying exactly, to say yeah. whatever is happening I, anyway I didn't think we'd given you enough <laughs> <laughs> Shall we so, play yeah. a bit? Shall we play a bit now? Yeah, um, let's play. Let's play what, a little there bit. There are three tracks that I yeah. oh, that's uh, true, made. Yeah. Um, mm. But this one was the kind of one I had initially hoped I would make, which is something mm. from of very much of the two of you. Yeah. Um, and if you want to play a bit, and then I'll say if we want to about some of the things that surprised me in that. And me, yeah. Uh, right. Episode. So we're going to try and do this. I need to. Oh, I'll turn it down. Track, um, I was trying, I was building up to the surprise, I mm. suppose. Um, um, in other pieces, I would uh, I would do it in a reverse order. Of ah, so not okay. me first. <laughs> yeah. But because I was building up to a surprise, this is me singing at the moment. And that's me coming in. Yeah. I think it harmonizes beautifully together. But what I love is then you've made the opportunity for me and Lucy to sing together uh, equally, I guess is, is the word I'd use, which is the power that comes in from this track. So you'll see here in a minute. <laughs> And so Rihanna, you use a loop on this, presumably. Yes, so I'm repeating a phrase that uh, Lucy sings and looping it. Mm. Which is a technique we learn together in later on in East, the next Easter, though, isn't it? Or two Easter's.
you. Thank you again for creating. Oh, wow. It was such a special moment. I listened to it. I cried. I listened again. I cried. <laughs> um, because for us, it, it, it summed up a very, very hard time, which I know people would have gone through who are shielding and stuff and still, still shielding. Um, and also just the connectivity that Lucy and I have. Um, and I know we'll talk more about this um in a bit but for me as a parent um for someone who uh, for lucy's non-word user communication is kind of innate between the pair of us but is difficult for other people outside of our bubble but music music's a real equal it is it's very equal um and uh i think she has really shown me that so through the medium of music Lucy and working with artists like yourself in particular has really managed to help me to find a happier balanced place where I understand that communication is 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 it goes out in different it's almost like fascia you know on your muscles it's kind of in you mm. um even even I suspect because she plays music in a uh, she likes the, the, the vibration of sound as well she like she likes tastes music it's a it's a whole sensory vestibular process for her anyway I'll hand over to you <laughs> yeah um I just thought I would yeah it, she's extremely musical in the way that I understand what musical is what being musical is um in a really sort of uh almost a, a quite normative way I suppose like I was ready to listen to the uh the thing the recordings you sent I listened my process was that I listened really intently to them for things that sounded I suppose that rang a musical bell in my ear so mm. I was clear that we were collaborating I'm also a musical person you're a musical person and Liz is a musical person and we were we were sort of working together um and uh at the point where I picked out Lucy's vocal that's in that track I had picked it out because i I noticed something almost classical in it in terms of her um she does a sort of arpeggio this ooh, ooh, ooh. and um and then I was working on the on the actual track on my computer and I popped it in to listen to it in the context of of your tuning of you are my sunshine um and I was I suppose I was expecting it to be uh, not necessarily matched and that I might then I would have to think about whether it was correct mm, to manipulate mm. your voice or Lucy's voice so that they could fit mm. together more easily but then what I found when I did it was that um it's perfectly in tune with the you are my sunshine that you sing to her and it's probably worth mentioning that the vocal that she has in that you are my sunshine isn't taken from a moment where you are singing it to her it's taken from like the next morning and and mm. um, and while she's actually playing a guitar that has a different tuning mm. um so she so her what really struck me was that her her kind of um her vocalizing was in tune with your you are my sunshine and it's like something that um I was maybe only noticeable because I separated the guitar and the vo and the vocal from what you sent me and then we were doing this thing and and like it taught me something about about the value of of listening really intently and of valuing t tiny little pieces of things and sort of uh yeah just just listening really intently <laughs> I think uh, that was something for me yeah that's brilliant. And so um, we made that and the two other pieces. And there was, we must talk about Tinder as well. We, we will refer, there'll be a photo. We're going to have overlays. Joe will put overlays as yes. a photo of the listening device as well, which was, yeah. which is special. So I wanted to, I wanted to make this track, but I also wanted to send it to you and for you to be able, you and Lucy to be able to listen to it, or Lucy in particular, I should mm. say, to be able to listen to it in a way that was, um, yeah, privileging a uh, multi-sensory uh, way of listening. And so uh, I worked with an artist, Tim Spooner, and we devised this sort of listening device that's a kind of, it's kind of two beings, but it's sort mm -hmm. of one being and uh, and it kind of envelops you when you're listening and and, and you can also teethe it, like, mm -hmm. uh, sorry, mouth it. You can mm -hmm. mouth it uh, as a she way. She responded really well to that. And yeah, I, mean, I think we, because we felt the vibration of the sound, I mean, I have to say that the... Um, 
hopefully will convert some people uh, to dance. Uh, please go and listen to <laughs> Hey Bonnie Rome with some headsets from um, from Bicep and really turn it up because the bass goes through you. And I, I realise then I think I, I listen and absorb and enjoy music in almost the same way that Lucy does in a whole physical sense. And I think that's, I, I, it's just layers of an onion every day. It's really interesting to recognize the similarities, which is important. Let's just quickly then talk about how we um, just work together um, in a much longer face-to-face -face collaboration than in Easter 23. It was this year, wasn't it? It seems yeah, to it's <laughs> ages ago, but yeah. And so yeah. Um, you had a residency and when you came down locally to us, so we could see yeah, you every day. So um I guess from our collaboration um I was really interested in in just finding a way to be together again and and in person to see what that was like and you had fed back that this kind of uh thing of, of seeing Lucy as a musician was mm -hmm. quite impactful um and so I just thought we'd maybe run with it in the meantime I have been doing work in specialist school settings so meeting people like Lucy but in a different kind of way mm. um, with it, with their with their peers at school. And uh, I was thinking about uh, whether these music and sound collaborations might be shared more widely as a as a theater experience, I suppose, as like mm. an immersive kind of performance experience. Um, so, yeah, I want to. So we came together, spent a, a week together yeah just exploring what an in-person music and sound collaboration might be like um a big space so I think space kind of as in not the final frontier but the, the space that you're around and that's the kind of work that I do in museums and galleries often in big spaces they, that has an impact not just vocally on the sound and the echoes and things but on your own sense of being in that space so it's a huge hall it's like an old gym sports hall isn't it attached to this amazing house um in Faversham and um quite chilly so the environment and stuff but yeah. you had um what was there were loads of magical things that happened but one of the things was is uh lucy had started to self-propel on a wheelchair and it's something that's taken us years to encourage her to do and you had already i hadn't even talked to you about this but you'd already thought mm, using the floor as a soundscape allowing you to so putting crackly type things like um space blankets straws paper straws bubble wrap neck curtains and all sorts of things to, to that would make noise and encourage her then well just just actually we didn't encourage her just like, it's there do you want to roll over and she did and from that moment then so using her physicality her equipment which is the wheelchair which you know she identifies as a wheelchair user as well to make sound too it's really extraordinary i hadn't seen that before and i think it was quite powerful in itself yeah, there were loads of things that week. I suppose I just brought a lot of stuff with me that I mm. used to make music and I'd been using in the school settings. So everyday objects that make sounds, I'm really yeah. interested in, to, in that. Um, and we had this big hall, yeah. And I, mm. and I was just wanting to sort of see uh, what would be the way to mm. work together and what Lucy would be interested in. You also brought Lucy's instruments that she oh yes really yeah we brought a guitar in. yeah yeah I think so, it was important to bring a familiarity into the space so to kind of yeah own it a bit more really maybe I suppose yeah that was important yeah, yeah. so um so I was yeah those those days were really interesting and and mm. there were some things where uh which is I think classic for this kind of work uh if you're in my position which is like you think one thing and that and then you suddenly realize oh we should have been doing this all along ah oh. uh, yeah. so I think it was like the second day or maybe the third that I I thought oh, I'd been thinking I think we need to not use any words yeah those of us who do use words we need to yeah. not use any words when we're in that big hall yeah. so we started doing that um and that had a, a really had quite a impact. noticeable impact didn't it yeah in terms yeah. of Lucy leading I then had you gave me a role you taught me how to use the loop thing whatever it's called a loop yeah thing. the loop station so station. I use a loop station <laughs> and uh where where you can press a button and it starts recording and when you press it again it immediately plays back what you just recorded mm -hmm. and repeats and repeats and it's a really useful tool I've found for for musical collaboration in this way without language and without mm -hmm. um intellectual meaning making being prioritized mm -hmm. 
mm. that you can there can be intellectual understanding of what's happening but there can also just be response to hearing your own voice again or the thing that you've just done be repeated to and you, you can you can layer up can't you because I think there's something like four or five loop, uh, pedals loop pedals so you could layer up on different sounds and then uh, orchestrate I guess is the best word shall we just try and sh- try and share <laughs> yeah um, oh gosh um, share... right I'm gonna so, pause while I do this a minute Hank, should I pause or do you want to describe what you're doing a little bit of framing <laughs> I'll frame it uh, you frame so... it and I'll try and um yeah here we go then. all right so we're gonna share a short extract of a video that I made um I was supported to do this work with Lucy um and Faversham and Sam supporting uh by an organization called Horizon which supports uh, England-based artists to uh, kind of showcase their work internationally and they supported us with a residency so I may I had to make a film to share with kind of international programming colleagues uh, okay. what I'd been up to. White noise fact- I can't hold it on any longer. <laughs> Can you hear that okay? The white noise fact. Yeah brilliant. Has come <laughs> so any minute of this and we'll. A desire to make something that privileges sensory meaning making over intellectual meaning making. And that does that in the making process as well as the experiencing process. There's a listening environment that is the white noise factory and that is being worked out to be highly responsive. And then the white noise factory is also a series of collaborations of music and sound making collaborations that have privileged the sensory over the intellectual. That has involved different things. So that's involved me exploring materials as a way of making sound. And it's also involved me collaborating with young people for whom language is not a primary means of communication and doing sound and music collaboration in non-linguistic sensory sessions together. I think that music and sound that has been made in that mode should be being shared widely. It should be being shared widely in a way that sort of brings people into that same way of being. Okay, I got so excited. I think uh... I could listen to all of that. <laughs> we can put a link to the full kind of video if you want yeah. to see more. Yeah. Um, I just want to, I'm mindful of the time. I think uh, we were going to talk about the importance of process. It's probably just worth um, saying as well. That wasn't, uh, Lucy was was uh, well, well enough to take part of the project, but um, wasn't 100, 110%. I guess she was probably functioning about sort of 80% in terms of wellness. So um there were times where we needed to process and relax and, and just uh, just so there is the process which is of of the jo- joined collaboration but then do you just want to explain the kind of magical moment and also how it's affected you since about processing <laughs> yeah <laughs> processing time yeah. so um during on the last day we had a photographer Jemima Young come in and take photos of us working together which are the photos that you can see and there's one photo that Jemima took which comes from a moment where um Lucy had been had been super super active and uh and we'd been doing a lot and then um Lucy uh, sort of folded down and closed up a little to 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 process um and I felt in that moment uh that I wanted to join her Mm -hmm. um so we we joined her in that Mm -hmm. um and it that is something that I've taken on into uh into other work an awareness of my own need to to process to have processing time and um, when I especially when I've been doing really engaged intensive stuff and also um, a commitment to everybody taking time to process when I'm in a collective environment or a collaboration that when one person needs some processing time we all have processing time and um, and I was most recently working with some artists in Lisbon on a project uh, we were working across a language barrier everyone has different uh, dealing with different kind of 
health and neuro neurologies and um i uh, i invoked lucy as a colleague who had taught me um about this uh, need to commit to to having shared processing time whenever somebody needs it so we made a sign together that was uh put on the wall and it was like a button that you could anyone could press at any time and it would immediately create um a a kind of processing moment that sounds really beautiful and um yeah I guess you need to be in the space with each other and how confident did people feel to press that I mean I guess once the first person's done it then it's you know. yeah what's interesting is that actually I have to own up that nobody did we did okay. it wasn't pressed mm. and I ha I have to think about whether it was accessible enough easy mm. enough to ask for we also had built-in um breaks brain breaks okay. every every 45 minutes right okay yeah That's um important. so mm. I can I I think it's possible that uh with the people who were there our 45 minute our schedule of breaks mm. sufficient <laughs> yeah yeah um, I think going back to when we were working together um and when Lucy and, and this did maybe I'm, I'm going to say maybe it happened before we had the no words um kind of rule in that space in the performance space um and I wasn't aware of it but certainly after it the, a, and a, a dynamic change didn't it where uh, there was a, a, I'm going to say the word equality or equity in terms of everybody being, because words have been taken out of the equation, you know, suddenly, and, and we, I think we all sat down, weren't we, as well, we were all sort of at a similar kind of level, that the process became part of as she led. And I, I think, uh, I, I felt anyway, that she felt that she knew she was leading that which is important I think um in in its agency isn't it so um it's definitely affected me and it's affected me as a, as a mum and also my work moving forward um Lucy's now taking part of something called Sounds of Intent which is an amazing project and we'll be studying through and I've just literally just last week made them write uh, music and um music study in her HCP in fact, the sound of intent is in her EHCP. I don't know, maybe the first in the country. So she is taking forward her music in a, in a it's all meaningful, but in a, in a purposeful way. It's part of her daily life or education, and she has music therapy. I've joined uh, the Demelza Hospice, where she goes to choir and I'm singing in Canterbury Cathedral on Tuesday. So for me, singing, I found my I've rekindled my love of singing, and well, not only rekindled. I, I love singing anyway, but I, I understood now more the power of singing with people or sharing sound making with people as opposed to just you know singing on your own in the kitchen which is still fun but so I'm doing that what's next for you Rihanna before we go um so I'm currently writing uh, a funding application okay <laughs> uh to uh to kind of try and like really sort of finish and mount this this listening environment uh that I envisage being a way of sharing the various sound of music collaborations that have that are being made under this banner of the white noise factory mm. um so we'll see how that goes but the intention mm. is that that becomes a a listening space that also privileges sensory meaning making over intellectual meaning making Brilliant. And um, it's activated by a DJ. So a DJ is doing the a, a sort of live music mixing. Um, mm. But we'll see. Yeah, that's that's the current situation for me is like trying to get money from wherever I can find it yeah. to sort of continue this, this kind of work. Yeah. You are leading the edge on this. So thank you for doing that. Um, I guess uh, links will be for, for you and uh, and your work and stuff and how to move forward. And I guess if people want to get in contact with you to ask questions about how they could do that, adopt more of this practice within their settings, whatever their settings are. Certainly uh, understanding and viewing and valuing process, I think, was is the key, isn't it, really, that's come from this? Yeah, I feel like, um, so I work, I work across a lot of different kind of um. Uh, mediums and settings and things like that and to me it's really political um uh all of this to commit to just kind of understanding one another or seeing one another and mm -hmm. and trying to find ways to to collaborate um uh in a way that is that is kind of really seeking a collaboration and uh yeah so so yeah, I don't know have any answers, but I'm <laughs> no, I'm, I'm really enjoying sharing the discussion. Um, yeah, and 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 I'm really enjoying like 
um being able to reference my colleagues in different settings mm. uh so be yeah. working with brazilian artists in lisbon doing a work lying on the street and being able to reference lucy as a colleague and being mm. able to reference those artists as colleagues and everyone's a, co a colleague it's important to me um to kind of uh acknowledge like and credit uh my creative colleagues um wherever i am finding them <laughs> i shall tell her tomorrow <laughs> she'll be delighted she's in bed now <laughs> right um thanks everybody else uh, for joining us and hope you found this interesting and um yeah take care bye bye